Thank you, uh, Eric. And it is absolutely my pleasure to be uh, virtually with you today. I uh, wish we were not in a worldwide pandemic and I could be there uh, by your side, Eric, uh, with, uh, with the folks in the room and um, you know, even more people in the room if we were not in the middle of a pandemic. But we're doing the best we can and I appreciate the, uh, the invitation. Uh, really looking forward to talking to you today about uh, urban air mobility. Uh, we also use the word within Boeing, uh, future mobility, and it's really around the concepts of how uh, people and things can travel uh, three-dimensionally. Uh, of course, lots of autonomy we're starting to see happen on the ground, uh, but we think there's a, another aspect of autonomous flight uh, that really starts to add another dimension to travel. If you think about travel today, uh, your typical airplane, a single aisle airplane, uh, such as a Boeing 737, uh, roughly on average um, goes about 300 to 500 miles, can extend up to well over a thousand miles. And the problem that we're trying to solve at Boeing is how can aviation be used in a different way? How can it be used um, over traffic in short distances? Or how can we move people at incredible speeds across the globe, uh, significantly saving time? So I'll go ahead and have, you, and have Aaron slip, flip to my first slide, because it really starts to talk about the why. Why are we doing what we're doing at Boeing? And it's because of a number of things, but first, you have to figure out what the problem is that you're trying to solve. And the problem that we see is that congestion is growing at an alarming rate. Um, and it's cutting into productivity and it's cutting into uh, family time and it's cutting into people's lives. And as we continue to live in a world where um, our digital, digital lives have, have, uh, have surrounded us with capability, the one precious asset uh, we still must protect is our own personal time. And um, as you can see on this slide, worldwide average, uh, people lose about 210 hours a year in congestion. Of course, this is pre-pandemic uh, uh, numbers, um, but we all are, are all hopeful and believe that we'll return to those days. Uh, but roughly that's nearly nine days per year for an individual. Um, and that's a, a major cut into, uh, into people's productivity. And, and why now? Why is the opportunity in front of us? And I know that uh, uh, the country of Korea has, um, has, has set out goals that uh, it, it uh, desires to have new forms of traffic by 2025. And I commend the, the, uh, the leadership of Korea for setting those goals and trying to achieve those level of objectives. And the reason why they can do that is because you're seeing a, a, a maturity in autonomy uh, happening. Um, the technology, the software uh, is coming together. You're seeing new uh, components uh, such as battery technology, battery cost, energy density, all coming together, which is a providing new capability. The invention of uh, vertical takeoff to, tra to transitioning to forward flight uh, using both uh, a heavy lift component, but then also the ability to get endurance through uh, fixed wing aircraft. And that combination is, becomes a differentiator. Uh, in the transportation sector, we're seeing different business models that um, have, have uh, emerged in the area of shared resources, uh, such as ride sharing. And those models can be extended to an air travel segment. Uh, and then you start to see the world regulators um, in all the countries uh, starting to look at frameworks uh, and rulemaking. We spend a tremendous amount of time uh, doing testing uh, with autonomous flight and understanding the levels of safety that are gonna be needed for a rigorous uh, regulatory policy to make sure that we all continue to maintain the safety and the standards of flying that we've all come to enjoy. Uh, so we cannot sacrifice safety whatsoever um, as we enter into this, this new chapter. So the problem exists and these technologies are converging and that, um, that uh, gives us a big opportunity to go 
and start to address this. If you go to the next slide, when you think of urban air mobility in particular, uh, I think the first thing that people think about is the flying car or the air platform. And there's some significant challenges to get a highly reliable, efficient, uh, economical platform uh, to be able to perform those missions such as air taxi. Uh, there's a maturity that has to occur in the supply chain. There, ha there uh, has to be a level of quality to make sure that all the components are aviation grade and are produced at scale uh, because the starting the whole new segment will take a, a level of investment uh, by both traditional aviation providers and even non-traditional providers. Um, and, but, but there's so much more than just the actual platform. Uh, and it's really a, a great um, a segue into the concept of try everything because what you really have to do is you have to create an ecosystem and the, and the entrepreneurial opportunities that will start to exist uh, in this ecosystem. Uh, and I have a cartoon of a, of a city um, and I'll explain that a little bit, but let me start with uh, history. If you look at uh, historically how aviation has progressed um, in its first you know, 104 years, uh, the history of the Boeing company is paralleled the history of aviation. Uh, when we entered into the jet age in the late 50s and the invention of the 707, it was an amazing uh, innovation to uh, speed up uh, and allow for higher uh, load factors for airplanes. Uh, the, the innovation definitely happened on the airplane, on the platform. However, what really allowed for the new mode of transportation to happen is really the evolution of the ecosystem around the airplane. And that was the increase of the runways to be able to accommodate the aircraft. So in the case of urban air mobilities, the landing spots, the, uh, uh, the heliports, do we have enough of them? Where do they need to be? Uh, what's the study that needs to take place to understand the walking distance that an individual has to have from their place of origin to a heliport? Or is it a connected transport model that uses shared transportation to get you to the heliport? We see all this being highly integrated into a uh, overall ecosystem. And just like in introduction of the jet age, you had, the, you had a, an expansion that started to take place around uh, uh, different hubs. The airports started to expand. Like I said, their infrastructure uh, was built out. The invention of jetways was created to allow for um, easy and quick boarding onto these larger aircraft. The aircraft, the airplane, the airports got more elaborate with concession and, and stores and, and other things that kept passengers interested, which is an opportunity in the future of urban air mobility. Uh, hotels uh, popped up around airports for overnight stays to be convenient to them. Uh, rental car agencies have come to airports. Now they're leaving airports because we have shared transportation. So this whole ecosystem has to be developed. It's more than just uh, creating and inventing the airplane. And all of those provide opportunity and it's a real opportunity for try everything. What are the problems that we're gonna have to solve? What are the needs that consumers will need to have in order to have this new form of, of transportation? And so we spend a lot of time uh, doing modeling and simulation of large cities to understand what some of the needs might be and because ultimately that feeds back into the requirements that we'll have to have to build uh, the, the right aircraft and the safe aircraft that we need to operate in these larger ecosystems. And you can see on the bottom there, just a, a couple of the segments that become important. It's everywhere from design to the subsystem development, like I said, the safety and quality in the supply chain, integrating it all together, how do you, what's the business model that will finance, um, you know, this new infrastructure, these new platforms? Uh, is, it, is it a business model similar to shared, uh, shared transportation that we see today? The airspace management is, an, is a very, very important component. Uh, how do we really rapidly increase uh, and at scale uh, a, autonomous, uh, unpiloted aircraft, unhumaned piloted aircraft into the airspace? What is the right level of human interaction, either from the ground or within the ecosystem 
for safety of flight. Uh, the airspace management is an important piece. Uh, around the world, we've enjoyed uh, high integrity of our airspace uh, from a safety perspective. And as we go into this new chapter of transportation, we have to be incredibly careful to make sure that that integrity of the airspace remains high and we have the same level of safety, if not better. And then after, and then of course, the aftermarket support uh, for, the, for the aircraft and you know, how will the customers interface with these? Uh, will it be through traditional airlines? Will it be through new business ventures? Um, all of that is part of the ecosystem that we will be defining over time as we start to achieve some of these goals. Next slide, please. So at Boeing, uh, we've been working on all these different areas. We've taken a unique approach. We're, we're tempering our efforts these days uh, because of COVID-19, uh, which has slowed down um, investment worldwide in this area. Um, although goals like what we have in Korea of 2025 uh, continue to show that there's a need and a focus and uh, an opportunity for us to continue to drive forward. Um, but we're doing it through a number of ways, uh, through different joint ventures that we've had. Uh, our joint venture SkyGrid is focused on the airspace management piece. We have a, a joint venture called WISC, which is focused on the air taxi. Uh, we have an investment in a company called Arion, which we, uh, which we are looking at high speed supersonic travel. Then we're doing our own inorganic work around small drones that have a level of safety and reliability that you come to expect from the Boeing company and uh, be able to move small logistics packages uh, short distances over traffic uh, to uh, the yellow aircraft in the middle, which is more of the size of, a, of an air taxi vehicle, all the way up to the far right where you have hypersonic aircraft that could literally uh, travel the globe in a matter of hours. And then we're not, again, we're not just focused on the building of these aircraft, but also the right strategic partners. We leverage our uh, Horizon X Ventures Fund uh, that we have where we engage with small startups uh, where they can bring a special capability or technology into this ecosystem or into our supply chain, like detect and avoid technologies or other forms of, uh, of, um, of capability that accelerate us meeting the goals that, uh, that are out there. Uh, we work on, like I said, modeling and simulation to understand what the challenges are uh, in logistics and, and traffic, both foot traffic, car traffic, and air traffic. Uh, and then also uh, really trying to work as close as we can with the global regulators and, and doing test and learn experiments so we can inform uh, what the right regulatory policies should be for us to have safety of flight. And lastly, I think I have one more slide, uh, which is really this, this commitment to safety. I've said it a number of times uh, throughout the presentation, but it's really important um, as we have a new entrance come into this field, the beauty of uh, a new segment of air travel like this, a new industry around uh, urban air mobility will attract new players. It'll attract new investors. It'll attract new entrepreneurs. Uh, and that's, brings innovation. It brings uh, speed and agility to move forward. But what we have to remember is our overall commitment to safety. Um, again, we have to look at our history and learn from it and continue to make sure that we're striving to have the same level of safety uh, in these new uh, vehicles, this next uh, generation of vehicles, air vehicles that we've had in the past. And so how do we bring all those lessons learned to make sure that we, we achieve that? And uh, that's a main focus for us. And that really is the balance between um, speed and agility and also making sure that we, we have safety going forward. So uh, we're, um, we're looking forward to um, this next chapter of aviation. Uh, we've been very uh, active in our first 100 years to help define what, what flying uh, should be both commercial and then in our military business. And as we look at our next hundred years at Boeing, this new form of transportation and how it will change the world and how we uh, impact people's lives. And more importantly, how do we protect that biggest asset that we all want to have, which is time in the fast paced world that we live in. 
So that's just a quick uh, introduction to what we're up to, Eric, and I'll okay. turn it back over to you. Great. Thanks.